Hey, this is Adrian Duarte from Atlanta, Georgia. You're listening to Go Terran TV. Hey everybody, welcome to Go Terran TV today. I'm Terran the Traveling Trainer out of Atlanta, Georgia, episode number 493. And as you heard earlier on the other line calling uh, right here actually in Atlanta, Georgia as well, we have Mr. Adrian Duarte. Adrian, how are you doing out there? I'm pretty good. I'm a little tired still from the from the cruise, but um doing awesome. And um got a little sick and um I think we all did. Hollywood Hollywood um was the second one who got sick, but she actually got sick on the cruise and oh, um, no, lost I didn't. her. Lo- you didn't know she lost her voice. Oh, and, um, yeah. Oh. So, uh, yeah. So all of us are suffering after, but it was it was worth it. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Uh, well, I've um, mentioned to you that uh, we've done a show with uh, both uh, Roxy and Diana only so far. So uh, actually, um, now we've got you on here. Wanted to get your perspective. Of course, for the people listening, we're talking about the Afterglow Fan Party cruise uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, so let's get your insight. Um, can you take us through, I guess, kind of like an itinerary of when, you know, leaving Atlanta, going there, and then the whole story of, you know, how it happened? Because I know you got a lot of juicy uh, stories for us here today. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean my my part of you know just my trip was more than just the cruise. We um, you know Terry, my partner and I, mm-hmm. we flew out to um, to L.A. and hung out for three days before the cruise. And um, you know it it was you know amazing from the time we left Atlanta because you know we took Southwest it was the first time I've ever taken Southwest Airlines how and was I that a little bit it I was expecting a very tight ride but mm-hmm. it was actually really comfortable it was much more comfortable than taking American Airlines back um, American we couldn't even move and it was uncomfortable but um, mm. Southwest those the the flight attendants are are amazing they are probably the most attentive and um like genuine people you'd ever meet but um we we flew out on southwest and once we arrived in la and got off the plane something happened to both of us because we're like oh my god this place is just not atlanta Hmm. and um it's something about the atmosphere is very healing and um you know, it, it's so hard to explain. So that was the first thing we experienced. The second thing is the we noticed the difference between the, there's a, a lot of homeless people out there. So the homeless mm-hmm. people in Atlanta versus um, the homeless people in L.A. are like day and night. The mm-hmm. L.A. people don't come up to you and they don't bother you unless you make eye contact. That's kind of their invite. Whereas in Atlanta, they just come up to you and, you know, bother you and, you know, want money or crazy. But there, and it was the first time Terry had ever taken their public transport. Well, he had never been out there anyway. So it was the Mm -hmm. first time we took public transport. We um, took the train from around LAX down to Long Beach to our hotel and there was this Hispanic lady, and I, I love telling the story. Everybody at work loves this. Um, there was a Hispanic lady on, on the train, and she had a cheesecloth over her head, and she was, like, praying in Spanish, just muttering, and we couldn't understand her. And then these kids got on the train, and she um, started preaching to them in English and, you know, huh. premarital sex and drugs and all that. And they're like, whatever, lady. And then this kind of tells you how the people are there. That, mm. You know, it's just, she, you know, she kind of, you know, worried about them and she was, you know, preaching, you know, her views. And then she said, uh, they're like, whatever, lady. And then she goes, um, you have been forewarned. It's a huh. message from God, not me. I don't even know you. And um, huh. that's when I told Terry, I said, this is awesome. This this is just like, you know, the the beginning of an amazing trip because it, it was just um, what do you call it? um, uh, just entertaining from the beginning. And then um, you know, once 
you know, that day was over. The next day, we went to Knott's Berry Farm with Daisy. And I had never met Daisy before, but I'd been speaking to her for, you know, three years, two or three years over the phone. And Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing like meeting somebody who, you know, you've idolized since childhood and Mm -hmm. going to one of the coolest places on earth Uh, Knott's Berry Farms one of the first amusement parks ever in the U.S. and um, the you know just getting on like what they call the supreme scream which is kind of like acrophobia in um, at Six Flags in Georgia and um, you know looking over and being lifted up 250 feet and looking over and seeing Daisy (laughs) just look at me and say what are we doing and then being dropped and both of us screaming it it was just (laughs) magical and that I mean all of this is just before the cruise and um, (laughs) so it just set us up and um, then we did Hollywood and you know kind of hung out Mm -hmm. we went to you know the Hollywood Walk of Fame and Harry had never seen um, Hollywood Boulevard and going down Mulholland Drive and all that which is scary to me because it's cliffs and tight roads and you know they the tour bus had to pull over a couple of times to let people pass because it is not the um the widest of roads and it's on cliffs so mm. it's, it's just mm. crazy but uh and then the cruise happened and um <laughs> that that in itself was was amazing and um and also the uh the uh Bon Voyage party on um, the Queen Mary. David McLean was there. Did they tell you that? Yes. Um, Rock Sierra. Uh, they did. Yeah. I was shocked. And, yeah, we were too. And supposedly he was there by coincidence. Just huh. He was there supporting. There were comics at the little restaurant we were at. And one of the comics, I guess, he was there to either support or he you know, representing and, um, you know, he was just there. And I think Manny, um, Briano and Angel were the only two who actually approached him. And then, um, the first girl to arrive besides Angel was Godiva. And I met her at the, you know, the the very front. And I mean, I was just beeline to her and, um, (laughs) she, she's beautiful and Mm -hmm. she's, a fabulous woman and um you know she brought her son and you know it it was just you know magical finally meeting her in person and then um you know uh uh-oh my phone just did something really strange but uh yeah um but uh yeah it, it was just like leading up to this cruise was already magical for us and um yeah and um then she kind of got a little, um, she got a little pissed with me because um, I didn't ask her for a picture with her, and I, you know, I wanted the first person to actually get a picture made with uh, with Godiva for that that party to be Diana Prince because Diana Prince had no clue she was going to be there. Right, and, um, right. Mm-hmm. I had no, I had known for about three weeks before that whole thing. And I, I kept it from Diana Prince and, um, it, that, it, that was probably the best part of that whole party was <laughs> seeing Diana's face when she saw both Godiva and Godiva's son. And, um, <laughs> it, it was, it was awesome. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew too. Uh, it, Roxy told me a couple weeks before and said, don't spoil it. And, Diana, you'll hear this on her podcast, was saying how, uh, uh, you know, how did all these queens uh, with the biggest mouths and gossip not uh, tell me this? Uh, she was shocked that uh, nobody uh, told her, you know, every, it was top secret. So. Was so we cool. knew better. We we <laughs> knew better because we knew we were going to get the rock, the, the Aster stomp, if we, <laughs> you know, if we said anything. And um, I actually treated Roxy, because Roxy, you know, she... She handed out awards at the Afterglow fan party. Um, 
the 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 little event and mm-hmm. you know at the end and w- the award for me I think she said it was the one most likely to take Ambien after midnight and you know <laughs> she handed me my little trophy and I was like is this guy Ambien in it but <laughs> that night I went back to my cabin and I actually did take Ambien and then all of a sudden I was like I'm hungry and <laughs> I headed down to you know the uh, Lido deck and I was like. I, I want pizza, and because that's all they serve at night is pizza and ice cream. And Roxy just happened to be there, oh, and I told funny. Jim Cooley, I, I warned Jim Cooley, I was like, I took Ambien. If I pass out, my cabin number is R104. Take me there if you can. <clears throat> so he was kind of prepared. And then I started tripping. With, oh, God. With, uh, so, uh uh, Roxy got to see the transformation from Adrian to Ambien, and um, you know she'd been talking about it, so she finally got to witness it. And, uh, and you know, I, I still remember it. And mostly, I'll black out during that, but that I did not. But um, yeah, meeting everybody was 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 awesome, and even the excursions. Like mm-hmm. uh, once we got to Ensenada. You know, the blowhole, I was looking forward to it until I saw it. And I was like, ah, yep, seen it. Mm. And then Terry, um, there was little little children that were wandering around there. And one of them rubbed up against Terry. And I saw what happened. Hmm. And um, he was trying to pick Terry's pocket. And, oh, um, God. Hmm. And um, he did it twice. And oh. luckily, Terry had his wallet in his front pocket because I told him, oh. I said, be prepared to have, you know, pit pockets or whatever happening. So put your wallet in your front pocket. Wow. And then, wow. Um, yeah, we went from the blowhole. We were a little hungry. So we ended up in a restaurant and we looked over and there's these rooms in this restaurant that had big cats, like hmm. Jaguar and a baby white lion, a uh, baby oh, white tiger oh, cool. and lions and all that, oh. and we're actually able to go hold the one, the baby lion, and it, oh. it was cute and cuddly. And Janir, I think Janir was the one who actually was able to hold the uh, the white tiger. And, oh, um, cool! Yeah, and Janir during karaoke, the boy can dance. I, I didn't expect it because, you know, he, he's, you know, hearing impaired and the guy got out and he, he's, oh, he, he's an amazing dancer. And, um, yeah, we unfortunately didn't get to host a uh, karaoke with, with Daisy, but it was awesome because I was still able to kind of, you know, get everybody up and, you know, moving and, and singing and everything else. So, you know, kind of, did double duty, and I got to sing with Diana Prince, which was fun. We sang It's Raining Men, and then I also had a chance to sing two other songs, but I gave my second spot away to Ryan Dalian's friend, um, uh, Diva, or Ashley, and because there wasn't enough time. So the next, the next cruise, hopefully, we're going to actually have um, karaoke with, um, with um, Daisy. Oh yeah. And then, uh, mm-hmm. Like all the events were amazing and um you know do, casino night with Hollywood was was extremely fun. It was the mm-hmm. first time I'd been on a ship casino. And the only thing I can tell you about those casinos on the ship is are they need to rename them to, you know, just just give us your money. <laughs> it's not a casino cuz every one of us lost. And oh, um no. you know, I I spent a total of 21 bucks and I was like, yep, yeah, I'm done. And, um, uh, yeah, so it, it was fun. It, I mean, it, while it lasted and, uh, yeah, so, uh, all, all the girls that were there were, you know, were just ex- fan friendly mm-hmm. and, you know, they told us their own stories of, of glow. And the one who surprised me the most was, um, was jailbait. And, um, I actually, I helped her out a little bit because when she first got on the ship, she almost had instant seasick. Oh, and, um, um yeah. I, I, I brought my kit full of, you know, my meds and I had <laughs> Dramamine with me and I had my C band and I actually got sick the second day. Oh, so, um, oh most, most of the time I was on the ship, I was either holding on to the bottom of my chair, 
thinking that was going to help me is something mental to stabilize me Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, just kind of running to my, my cabin and grabbing more Dramamine. And I actually had to share it with, um, Lindsay Roxy's daughter and, um, Shana, uh, Mm. Sonny's daughter. And those girls are, are fun to be around also. And I was glad to meet them. And, um, but yeah. And I met my, my childhood crush, Johnny C and I was nervous at first. And Mm -hmm. then I was like, you know what? I've moved on since, and he's probably one of the sweetest guys I've, you know, encountered. And, nice. you know, he, mm-hmm. he's just a great guy. And nice. um, hopefully, I'm hoping he'll be on the next cruise, too, because he was just so nice. And, um, you know, I, I didn't think it was approachable at first, and then I realized it was all in my head. Mm-hmm. And um, me, meeting mm-hmm. Matilda the Hun... Mm-hmm. And um, seeing her give a knocker locker to a complete stranger was <laughs> was was just like a moment where we're all like, are we really seeing this? And she <laughs> is exactly the way she is, and she, you know, how she wrote her book, and um, you know, it was it was fun. And my cruise buddy, Sunny, um, you know, she's, you know, I I kind of it was unexpected. I just hung out with Sonny 90% of the time. And um, wow. now that we're back in Atlanta, we're actually talking to Sonny about moving to California. And she's a real estate agent. And, yeah, um, that's right. Within, mm-hmm. the, within the next two years, Terry and I are hoping to move out to the L.A. area. Cool. Because it was just such a magical experience for us to be out there. And it, I think the deciding factors when we got off the plane in Atlanta and we walked out and the humidity hit us and I was, it, it just like surrounded us and <laughs> both of us looked at each other and said, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much, you know, the, the cruise in a nutshell. And yeah. then I also Ron, the paramedic from glow was there and yeah. he, he was, you know, on the Lido deck night most of the time. And then, um, you know who Bill Anderson is, right? Uh, remind me please. Um, he was, he's a trainer and he, he's a wrestler in his own, you know, just famous in the wrestling world already, but he was there and I had no clue who he was. So I had Mm. to look, Oh, and, um, do you know who Carlos Ray is? He's from, um, from, uh, roller derby. Oh, really? I remember roller derby. Okay. Okay. He was there and, you know, there's all these like unexpected people like Jim Cooley and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, his friend Matt, they are the, uh, announcer mafia. They, they were there and, you know, I was intimidated and like, I saw them on Facebook, but I was kind of intimidated because I thought they were just going to be these big, you know, redneck kind of (laughs) guys, you know, just, I didn't want to friend them. And then once I met them, I was like, okay, I'm going on Facebook. I'm friending these guys. Oh, and, um, cool. They're, they're awesome. And, you know, it just, this is, whole experience has actually brought a lot of us that normally wouldn't have been friends closer as friends. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, the Glow Girls brought us all together. And I now consider most of these people my own family because oh. it mm-hmm. it's just amazing. And, um but you've heard about the new, the next cruise, right? Yes, uh, February twelfth, I believe it is coming up. Uh, February, I think that's right. February twelfth through the nineteenth for 19th. New Orleans. Yes, going yes. to mm-hmm. Belize, mm-hmm. Um, Honduras, and then it's got two stops in Mexico, mm-hmm. and it's also during my birthday. Uh, so I get to celebrate Valentine's Day and my birthday on this next cruise. Oh my god. I think it's, oh the third person, Anthony Collins Jr. and um, his dad, Shorty, were the first to book on the cruise. And um, they they actually booked on, like, the, the last night of the cruise for oh the um, next cruise. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, a bunch of us jumped on that. And right now is the time to book. Um, it's going to be on the Norwegian Dawn 
that mm-hmm. ship was built in 2002 and um, refurbished in, at last in 2011, okay. but it's currently being refurbished now. It's in Freeport, Bahamas, um, mm-hmm. getting just a whole facelift again, and um, we're going to essentially be on a brand new ship. And, oh, um, nice. And everybody's got a book now because, um, you know, otherwise they'll, they'll lose out on some of the extras. And one of them is a free drink package. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's worth about $600. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you're unlimited alcohol, $600, mm-hmm. you know, uh, versus unlimited alcohol for free. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's exactly. kind of a no brainer. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just found out something else about this ship. Um, it was christened by, uh, Kim Cattrall from uh the uh sex in the city and mannequin so uh oh, we got a little little eighties thing kind of like a almost a glow thing theme going on there with that ship too so uh, I understand there's gonna be a prom yeah. night too right there is and from what I understand the uh the prom night's not a complete glow thing it's mm-hmm. actually the cruise itself the the cruise is actually doing a whole 80s theme on the, on the cruise ship itself. Nice. So the, the, the glow ladies are going to be a part of, you know, have their own events in within this, this whole 80s, 80s theme. So, mm-hmm. um, and I've also heard there are going to be some 80s pop stars on this too. And oh, cool. I don't know who, I don't know who that. And, and there is, you know, there, it, there's 12 spots from what I understand for the, the glow girls to, um, you know, to fill. Oh, so okay. I, I believe we're going to get 12 and this time we will get Daisy and, um, she couldn't come on the last one because there was a problem with her birth certificate. And, um, you know, I, I did get to spend my time with her, but mm-hmm. I, I'm hoping, you know, there's not going to be any kind of hitches for, um, the next one because everybody has got to meet her. She's, so amazing and down to earth and mm. just fabulous lady. And, um, and then we also got to meet MTV's mom, Barbie. And, um, she just, I think she just came out of the hospital after the cruise, mm. um, because she, she got, she got sick also. So, you know, I'm kind of sending good vibes her way and, um, her name's Barbie and she's, she's just, such, she's beautiful and, you know, She's, you know, what, what can you expect? She's, you know, part of the glow line and, uh, yeah, the, all the ladies are, are amazing and their families are just, just as awesome as they are. Oh, that's so cool. uh, But I do have some news about one of the girls who's going to be filling one of those 12 spots. And, um, a lot of people were asking about her for the first cruise and unfortunately, she could not come along, and that's Beastie the Road Warrior. Oh, um, nice! Very cool. She she has um, she is committed, and uh, the only you know kind of stipulation with her coming along is we're going to have to raise a little bit of money so she can get to New Orleans. Um, okay. And I think I think she and I are going to work on a T-shirt, a Beastie T-shirt. And I think she's going to be selling some of her, um, you know, her eight by tens and some autographs and stuff like that. And we're going to get a store set up for online and um, just to make sure she gets everything. And, um, you know, she's doing really, really well. And, you know, I met her when she was working on a show called Demolition Bates and I helped her, you know, write the concept and the, um, the promo package to the show. And that's how I actually got in with a lot of the ladies and, um, you know, and she's still pecking away with it and, you know, she's got to tweak it a little bit and hopefully she'll be able to do something with that, um, you know, in the future. But, um, she's, She's interested in the cruise, and, you know, all the ladies are, you know, they want her on board also. Excellent. And, um, yeah, she's she's iconic in, in, you know, Glow, and, you know, she's one of those characters that, you know, when you think of Glow, you're like, see. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she's just mm-hmm. like just like Roxy Astor and, you know, Matilda the Hun and, and, you know, all the other ladies in Hollywood and 
everybody else. There's there's Beastie there, so uh, yeah. we got to have her on. That's excellent. I gotta have her on here too. I uh, have been playing Facebook messaging with her, trying to uh, arrange an interview with her as well. So maybe we could plug that and uh, talk about the T-shirts when we get her on here too, and uh, talk about the cruise uh-huh. coming up. That's great. That's good news. I, I'm glad to hear that. Um, well, Adrian, that's awesome. Um, you know, I can't thank you enough for uh, sharing your perspective uh, on everything. It sounds like uh, you just had an amazing time and an incredible uh, life cherishing experience. You'll never forget. So, what else do you have oh, going on? Uh, What's on the plans for the rest of uh, this week uh, going forward? Uh, uh, the rest of the week, I will be working doubles as okay. much as I mm-hmm. possibly can at Hearth Pizza Tavern and um, Sandy Springs uh, to help pay off my my new cruise. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, you know, it's a little bit more expensive than the last one, but okay. we're actually um, we are driving. Um, from Atlanta to um, New Orleans this time. That's um, not a bad drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only six hours. It's like six hours. With with the way mm-hmm. Terry drives, it'll probably be five hours, five, <laughs> four or five hours. But yeah, um, unless, you know, I get them lost, and then it'll be about eight to ten hours. And <laughs> I'm really good at getting everybody lost. I mean, Johnny C. <laughs> and Jailbait can tell you I got us lost a couple of times when I was like, I know how to get to, you know, to this <laughs> restaurant on the ship, and then that thing we know we're lost. We're at the other other end of the ship. And, uh, you know, as a Boy Scout, but not that great a one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got going on. And then, you know, I want to try to start working on these glow uh, teddy bears, the knitted teddy bears. But, I mean, mm. it's just <laughs> – it, it's so hot, and I don't even want to be touching yarn right now. Um, I mean, it, the the heat of summer is arriving in Atlanta. It's and here. It, yeah, it, it, it is here. Yeah, it, yeah. it's just kind of you walk out the door, and you're like, oh, God, i got to go back inside and put a tank top on. Yeah, in, and, in uh, air conditioning. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, pretty much the only other things I got going on is I've I've got my own YouTube channel, my Adrian's Knitwits, that I got to start working on again, and mm. um, I kind of got in a rut, so that's my that's my new project, and uh, got to get a couple of those done too. And uh, yeah, let's plug yeah. Uh, that and your um, contact information now too, please. Uh, what, what is the YouTube channel for um, your show? Uh, I I think it's just Adrian's Knitwits. Okay. I, that's the easiest way to find me. I mean, there's I mean, I've got videos from, you know, ranging from, you know, me singing um to uh, you know, carnival rides to um, you know, just the glow stuff and then okay. me talking about my own life. So, uh Perfect. it's Adrian's Knitwits and um then I also have my blog and okay. everything else. But um, my contact pretty much is still just Facebook. And, okay. you know, I'll friend, I'll friend anybody. And, mm-hmm. you know, I see a friend request and I never hit block. I just, you know, kind of like do my own thing. Excellent. And, Excellent. Uh, yeah. Very good. That's, you know, that was, the, uh, you know, my view of the, the whole cruise. And, and I, I tell you, if – we go on another cruise. I swear, I would love to be back on Carnival because the people with that cruise cruise line and it, you know it being my first cruise, mm-hmm. they made it magical anyway. Yeah. But the next one's going to be um, on Norwegian, and I've heard they're they're you know even even better with their customer service. But nice. you know, I don't I don't see there, I don't see a way of them topping what we experienced already with carnival so uh you know it's they got big shoes to fill <laughs> well yeah like you said earlier the timing's really good uh valentine's day it's the week of your birthday so already you've got uh-huh. uh yeah a couple of big uh advantages right there uh so that's exactly that's, yeah that'll be something I, I will i will milk those for what it's worth too because <laughs> uh you know i every every year um terry calls it my birthday week and um, <laughs> because I just, you know, that's how I am. I'm like, you know, I'm going to eat whatever I want. And, you know, but I do have to lose weight again. I'm back on the bandwagon. I lost 28 pounds before the cruise. Awesome. And then I only, I gained four pounds on the cruise. And, you know, that's I bad. ate whatever I want. I drank yeah. whatever I want. 
So um, I'm back on um, the eat to live diet. And um, that's something Daisy actually told me about. And I think cool. Godiva turned her on to that. So yeah. it's by Dr. Joel Furman. And um, it's, it's a great little, pro, uh, you know, weight loss, uh, you know, eat what you want. And especially if you're lazy like me and you don't want to work out, you kind of eat, still you know, eat as much as you want from that book. And, um, but I'm going to start working out also, uh, planet fitness is opening up down the street and I'm going down there. I'm going to sign up and, you know, start working out. Perfect. I think, I don't think you could beat the rate. I think they're advertising like $10 a month, so it's not too 10 bad. 10 bucks a month, or you can do the 19 bucks a month and you get tanning included. And, oh, there you um, go. Oh. If, if you've ever seen me, I'm I'm white as a sheet right now. I'm a little bit more tan. I got the farmer's tan on because uh, <laughs> I was wearing I was wearing a tank top the whole time on the cruise, and um, you know, mm-hmm. kind of it shows. You can you can definitely tell I was wearing tanks. But um, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, that's pretty much you know pretty much that's what cool. I got going on right now, and and my future plans just getting on that on that other boat. Perfect. Well, we're going to look forward to that, Adrian. And uh, like I said, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out, coming here. And uh, you and I, we get, got to eventually, I got to come up there to Hearth sometime and uh, have some pizza. That way I can meet you. And uh, that'll be good to yeah. finally meet you in person, too. So. Well, I, I'll be there all the way up until the next cruise. So uh, mm-hmm. working double. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My only days off, I think, are Mondays and um, Fridays. Okay. That's my day off. So every day else, uh, you know, all the other days, you can catch me lunch or dinner. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'll remember yeah. that. And uh, again, yeah, I'll come out there and say hi and stop in. And uh, I, I've been meaning to check that place out forever and just uh, never uh, mm-hmm. up that way. But uh, yeah, I will make a point to do that. And uh, thanks again, Adrian. And um, again, we'll uh, plug um, the uh, website here too so people uh, have that uh, and they can subscribe, check out your YouTube channel and uh, get you and look you up on Facebook as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. So, folks, again, uh, there you heard it. Adrian Duarte, make sure you go on Facebook and uh, send a friend request today. And, uh, Adrian, enjoy the rest of your weekend, too. You, too. Thanks, Darren. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. All righty. All right. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, there you have it, Adrian Duarte, once again here on GoTerran TV. Adrian, thank you so much for your time if you're watching. And, uh, again, he told us about the Afterglow Fan Party Cruise as well as the upcoming number two Afterglow Fan Party Cruise in February 12th. So you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, And uh, we'll get more information on that as well. But in the meantime, folks, I want to encourage you to check out Adrian's information, his YouTube website link, all the contact info that he gave you on Facebook. And uh, when you go to his channel as well, check out his uh, Nitwits videos. They're hilarious. And uh, make sure you subscribe to his channel as well. So that'll wrap up today's GoTerran TV episode. Again, Adrian Duarte right here in Atlanta, Georgia, representing the gorgeous ladies of wrestling and all of their friends and family as well. So uh, that'll put another video blog in the books. I also want to invite everyone to please check out yours truly, and you can do so by liking GoTerran on Facebook, subscribing to GoTerran on YouTube, and following GoTerran on Twitter as well, and that'll keep you connected to yours truly, Taryn the Traveling Trainer, the master of the personal training universe, who always tells each and every one of you that it's your time, it's your investment, it's your life. Thanks so much for watching, folks. We'll see you on the next video blog, everybody. Bye-bye.